Shanghai, guys. It is a blissfully rainy evening, I am thrilled to say, although not rainy enough here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we have stumbled. It, it is a Monday. It is a Monday evening. And uh, the last of the rain clouds blowing out, I'm afraid to say. And uh, so I'm figuring out what to do. And I was really looking forward to this rant this morning. So I get up on Monday morning, turn on the mainstream media, and find the number one story on the planet. The number one story on the planet from none other than the New York Times is this piece titled, Did Nature Heal During the Pandemic? Anthropause, where we see the word anthropause in a headline in the New York Times. And so I was really looking forward to this. Of course, we all know the question, did nature heal during the pandemic anthropause? And the answer is, of course, it did not heal. Uh, COVID precautions created a global slowdown in human activity and an opportunity to learn more about the complex ways we affect other species. Uh-oh, guys, I think I have the wrong hat on. I gotta, well, what hat am I wearing? Oh, uh, well, you know, before you get too mad at me wearing this hat, nothing, there is no hat uh, in the Doomosphere that says W-A-S-F better than a Donald Trump hat. We're going to let Tigger uh, wear his own version of the ultimate WASF hat you can find in the Doomosphere. Anyway, so uh, the problem with this article is, is it's awful. Uh, I mean, the New York Times uh, ought to, I mean, uh, you know, I knew they weren't really going to get into it, like they weren't going to mention the, what is it, 29 billion masks floating around the ocean or whatever. Uh, but, but this was truly embarrassing, this article. Uh, you know, People Magazine could have done a more in-depth analysis to uh, the question. I mean, basically, they took the cop-out answer you, you know, that there were some winners and some losers. That some of our fellow earthlings were better off during the corona panic, and some of our fellow earthlings, you know, such as the ones who ended up in the stew pot or choked to death on a mask or whatever, uh, you know, those fellow earthlings uh, did not fare so well, but it was truly embarrassing. So I found myself uh, without a rat. But uh, fortunately, my alert uh, listeners. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna we're gonna have a coin toss. What do you guys want? The heads is we're going to hear from Umer Hake, who I talk about probably too much here. So on one side of the coin, we have Umer Hake. And on the other side of the coin, the tails, the ass side of the coin, of course, we have the head side, which would be Umer, and the ass side, which would be Elon Musk. You know, I, I don't talk about Elon Musk here on this channel because I, I simply don't want to give the guy any more press than he already doesn't deserve. Uh, this jackass, I, you know, he is below my contempt. And uh, anyway, I mean, I I could give a damn about Elon Musk, but anyway, uh, we're going. So what do we say? Heads, Umer, ass, Elon, and the winner is. Well, I dropped the coin. The winner is. It is ass. So we we might come back to Umer tomorrow. But uh, the ass has spoken, and we are going to check in with Elon Musk, and maybe this will be the only Elon Musk rant. I, I promise you and Sancho it won't be that long. This is in this long, long article. 
out of Salon Magazine today by a writer named Emil Torres. And uh, this is Emil. I don't know if Emil is, is male or female. I mean, why does it differ? Why does it? I give a damn if Emil is male or female. But anyway, Emil is uh, looking at Elon Musk. How Elon Musk sees the future. His bizarre sci fi vision should concern us all. Musk is sweet on long-termism, a vision of deep future human happiness that is even crazier than you think. Yes, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to read the, the preface to this article, and then this article gets way, way too deep into this very esoteric subject, which is interesting on one level but it's way beyond uh, an article to read out, but I will put the link, so if uh, you are piqued by anything here in the preface to this article, you should go on the link and get deeper into it. But uh, let, let's hear just the, the lead-in to this. They start off with a quote from Elon Musk, which I 100% agree with. Thank you, Elon Musk. The world has gone mad. There you go. I guess that is a tweet from Elon. In case you were unaware of it, Elon Musk wants you to know the world has gone mad. And uh, certainly uh, Elon Musk is one of the poster children for that uh, fact. All right. What does Elon Musk want? What is his vision of the future? These questions are of enormous importance because the decisions that Elon Musk makes unilaterally, undemocratically, inside the relatively small bubble of out-of-touch tech billionaires will very likely have a profound impact on the world that you and I, our children and grandchildren, end up living in. Musk is currently the richest person on the planet, and if only by virtue of this fact, one of the most powerful human beings in all of history. What he wants the future to look like is very likely what the future for all of humanity will end up becoming. Again, I, I have never, well, I don't pay that much attention to anything coming out of Elon Musk's mouth, but there is nothing in this long, and I read every word of this article, there is not one iota of evidence. Okay? Not one iota of evidence, and I think even Book Hermit will agree with me on this, uh, that what Elon Musk wants the future to look like is very likely what the future for all of humanity will end up becoming. Uh, no, actually it won't. Uh, what Elon Musk's vision of humanity is, you know, is basically a psychotic pipe dream that has no basis whatsoever in reality. That being said, that is just me, and I bet this is Emil's rant, so uh, we like to hear all voices here on Collapse Chronicles. This is why it is crucial to unravel the underlying normative worldview that has shaped his actions and public statements from founding SpaceX and Neuralink to complaining that we are in the midst of a demographic disaster because of, and they, and they actually, to Salon's credit, uh, they actually put this in italics. We are in a demographic disaster because of under underpopulation, not overpopulation, underpopulation, 
to trying, but alas failing, to purchase Twitter, the world's most influential social media platform. And again, uh, I don't know if that's a true statement or not. Is Twitter now the... I, I have never tweeted since the day I was born. Now, I understand that Collapse Chronicles uh, did and probably still does have a Twitter account. I just want to make uh, the, the statement that Sam Mitchell has never once been on Collapse Chronicles Twitter account. I have no clue how to get on the Collapse Chronicles Twitter account. Uh, I have no idea how to make a tweet. Uh, hopefully I will never learn how to tweet. All right. <clears throat> Musk has given us some hints about what he wants. For example, he says he hopes to quote, preserve the light of consciousness by becoming a spacefaring civilization and extending life to other planets, close quote. Uh, and again, I do not know if this next phrase, if Emil is being ironic or not. I, I, I honestly don't know if what I'm getting ready to read is, is irony or not. Uh, although, th this is Emil, not Elon, Although there are good reasons for believing that Martian colonies could result in catastrophic interplanetary wars that will probably destroy humanity. Yes, as the political theorist Daniel Durdney has convincingly argued in his book, Dark Skies. And uh, then they, then Emil offers this, this long, boring quote from one of uh, Elon Musk's many TED Talks. I, I have no interest in hearing one word that Elon Musk has to say on a TED Talk, so you can go read that long quote. Uh, but, more to the point, thank you for getting back to the point, but more to the point, Elon Musk's futurological, I love that word, futurological vision has also been crucially influenced it seems by an ideology called long-termism. Although long-termism can take many forms, the version that Elon Musk appears most enamored with comes from Swedish philosopher Nick Bostrom, who runs the grandiosely named Future of Humanity Institute, which describes itself on its website as having a quote, multidisciplinary research team that includes several of the world's most brilliant and famous minds working in this area. And uh, I just want to, uh, for the record, uh, I contacted, back when I was doing interviews, I did invite Nick Bostrom to appear on Collapse Chronicles and he very politely declined to be interviewed by Collapse Chronicles because, he, you know, he's one of these guys thinking that we're going to colonize, not just colonize Mars, but colonize pretty much this whole corner of the Milky Way. Not just Mars, not just this solar system, but uh, I I anyway. Uh, for example... Consider again Elon Musk's recent tweets about underpopulation. Not only is he worried about there not being enough people to colonize Mars, quote, if there aren't enough people for Earth, close quote, he writes, I guess on a tweet, quote, then there definitely will not be enough people for Mars. Yes. 
He is also apparently concerned that wealthy people are not procreating enough, as he wrote in a May 24th tweet, quote, contrary to what many think the richer someone is, the fewer kids they have, close quote. Musk himself has eight children and thus proudly declared, quote, I am doing my part. Ha ha. Now, of course, I, I think it was right after this that it was discovered that uh, Elon Musk knocked up one of his, uh, you know, one of his bimbo executives. I think she was at Neuralink. That Elon Musk, uh, maybe I don't know, maybe on their coffee break, uh, he uh, knocked up this uh, one of his employees, and she had twins. So that brought the number at least to 10 children he has. And now there's rumors that he has at least 12 children that we know about so far. Uh, the richest man in the world, in uh, my guess, is a hell of a lot more than any 12 children. Uh, that Elon, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if Elon Musk has 200. Uh, kids, but who knows. <clears throat> Although the fear that, quote, less desirable people, quote, close quote, might out, outbreed, quote, more desirable people, close quote, and then, of course, the editor had to put in here phrases that Musk himself has never used can be traced back to the late 19th century. Uh, and then uh, later they get into this, and I was thinking of reading this long section, but as long as we're on here and uh, rambling away on this Elon Musk thing, and th they never make a case that Elon Musk totally buys into this, but you, you hear this argument all the time from uh, from breeders and, and it just I mean it, it hurts my intelligence to as a uh, as a non-breeder to hear this that the only people uh, who are going to like get a vasectomy before they ever have a kid are the smartest people in the world and so if you're smart enough to understand not to breed and you don't breed, then you're taking the most intelligent people, such as myself, of course, and you know by this definition, out of the gene pool. And that if the smartest people on the planet, meaning people like me who have never bred, you see that they that only people not smart enough to realize that not breeding is the only way to save the planet are going to end up breeding. Uh, so this person, Emil, is, is I can't tell whether what Emil's, but they, it, it, because the article moves from, uh, from, this is actually an article about Nick Bostrom a lot more than it is about Elon Musk, but Nick Bostrom doesn't sell magazines. Elon Musk does. So they make this desperate ploy to make this article sound like it's about Elon Musk, and then they barely mention Elon Musk again, the rest of this book-length article, and go on this uh, rambling, and, and it is interesting, about long-termism and all of this stuff, and they talk about this argument that Nick Bostrom is promoting uh, that uh, only stupid people will end up breeding if all of these smart people stop breeding, and uh, which sounds to me like uh, that comment is so stupid that Nick Bostrom, like Elon Musk, must have 12 children himself. 
anybody promoting that argument is so stupid, uh, I hope to hell that they don't ever breed. But anyway, that's my comment. I, I completely reject on every statement. Uh, it, it is a cop-out. It is a chicken shit cop-out. Nothing more. That crap. It, it, the only one that the only one that uh, trumps that argument is that my child, my child, is going to grow up to save the planet. The only way, uh, in, in, uh, George Carlin has a great, uh, hilarious monologue. Uh, on this. If you haven't heard the, the George Carlin monologue on my child is going to grow up, uh, essentially George Carlin says, no, your child is not going to grow up to save the planet. Your child, like everybody else's child, is going to grow up to be a clueless moron. Okay? Nobody gives a damn about your kid, your grand kid, your kid is not going to grow up to save the planet. Your kid is going to grow up to do his or her part to destroy the planet. Anyway, we might be getting off course, but as I say, uh, the rest of this article, which goes on and on and on, uh, for uh, good Lord, has nothing to do with Elon Musk. It's, it's all about Nick Bostrom and, and some interesting stuff in here. Uh, and the only link to Elon Musk is that Elon Musk is a fan of Nick Bostrom. And, and so I'm sorry that Nick Bostrom uh, decline. Maybe Elon Musk would agree to uh, be interviewed by Collapse Chronicles. Should I send Elon a, does anybody have Elon Musk's email address where I can get Elon on the show and ask, uh, ask Elon himself how many kids he really has? But anyway, guys, let's just skip ahead. Uh, here's this one one paragraph that I enjoyed. Uh, this, of course, you know, part of Bostrom's philosophy fits with Elon Musk's rush to build colonies on Mars, which is seen as the stepping stone to our descendants spreading to other regions of the Milky Way galaxy beyond our humble little system. So the little solar system, as Musk recently tweeted, quote, humanity will reach Mars in your lifetime, close quote. And in an interview uh, just last month, he reiterated his aim of putting one million people on Mars by 2050. Okay. If Elon Musk or anyone else uh, believes that there will be one million people living on Mars uh, in the year 2050, that is direct evidence that people who have 8 to 10 to 12 children, no matter how rich they are, are complete clueless morons that have no basis in reality on any level. Does anybody believe, uh, you know, the question is more, is there going to be one million people on the blue planet by the year 2050, <coughs> which was uh, the subject of Umer Hake's uh, essay, which maybe I'll read tomorrow, called We're Not Going to Make It to 2050. But we will check in tomorrow. Uh, Musk wants to colonize space as equally as we can, just like Bostrom. Musk wants to create brain implants to enhance our intelligence 
just like Bostrom. Musk seems to be concerned about less intellectually gifted people having too many children, just like Bostrom. And Musk is worried about existential risks from super intelligent machines, just like Bostrom. Yes. Uh, all of this is worrisome for many reasons. As I argued last year, long-termism is, quote, quite possibly the most dangerous secular belief in the world today. And then he breaks uh, that all down uh, anyway. Uh, then they go all into this, this big story on uh, ethics and morality. Uh, okay, but wrapping it up at the bottom of this, and I'll put the link in for all of this, the missing uh, three-fourths of the article. Okay, but this is how Emil wraps up his story. <clears throat> Given that Elon Musk is one of the most powerful individuals in all of human history, we should be very concerned. Not only do these considerations provide strong reason to take immediate steps that would make Elon Musk less powerful, for example, by demanding that at minimum he pay his fair share in taxes, but it offers a more general argument against wealth inequality. No one should be in a position where they can unilaterally and undemocratically control in some significant way the future course of human development. Such sh control should be left to the people. Yes, we should be able to decide our own future for ourselves. Uh-huh. That's a whole other rant. Right now, the future is controlled by a small group of extremely wealthy individuals who are almost entirely unaccountable. And some of these individuals espouse normative worldviews that should make us all very nervous, indeed. So, uh, there you go. I think that's a good statement on Elon Musk. I think we can let Elon Musk uh, die on the vine here at Collapse Chronicles. And uh, so we're going to hear another flip side tomorrow. We'll go over and listen to Umer Haik's new essay, uh, you know, as, as Elon is claiming he is going to put one million people on Mars by the year 2050, uh, Umer Haik, meanwhile, is writing, we are not, we, meaning people on Earth, are not going to make it to 2050. The age of extinction is dawning by the day and we are doing too little, too late, to stop it. But we will uh, pick up that one tomorrow. But right now, uh, I have to say goodbye to the last rain that we're probably going to see and probably say goodbye to my pond. I've already said goodbye to the creek. And now I'm getting ready to go say goodbye to my pond, uh, all of the fish in my pond who will be dying here in a few days. We'll see how that adventure turns out. I highly suggest you get out there and catch all the fish in your pond before they all die. Well, you still can. And I think I have to feed this little dog. Are you ready for dinner or what? Look, is it up? Would you shut up? I'm ready for my dinner. Bye, guys.